In this video, we'll be providing you with the information that you need to know in order to submit samples for snakes for viral testing. Please watch the video in entirety. Failure to do so may lead to an accurate results being obtained, or you may get a delay in your test being conducted. Just a reminder that due to laboratory closure, no testing for sunshine virus or furla virus is available until February 2013. What viruses can the testing detect? Testing is currently available in this country to detect sunshine virus and furla virus. Furla virus was formerly known as Omphidium paramyxovirus or OPMV. Where is the testing done? The testing is only conducted at Murdoch University over in Western Australia, Perth. What type of testing is done? The type of test that is performed is what is known as a polymerase chain reaction or PCR test. This test identifies the presence of the specific viral DNA in the samples. There are three types of samples that can be tested. The first of these is a combined oral and cloacal swab. This swab can be taken from the mouth and up the cloaca of the snake. It can be easily done on live snakes using, using minimal equipment. The samples can be taken by a veterinarian or alternatively you can take them yourself. The materials required can be easily obtained from your local vet if needed. And we're going to go run through the required equipment now. So the first thing that you need is a sterile cotton swab. So this is shown on the left here. You should avoid using bacterial culture swabs, as in the next one. You can see the gel material at the end of that tube. That swab is designed to culture bacteria and we don't want to do that. We don't want to facilitate bacterial growth. The second thing you're going to need is a sterile specimen container. This yellow top container is an example of that. You're going to need two to five mils of sterile saline or sodium chloride. So this is a larger bottle of it, but you won't need as much as that, only two to five mils. You're going to need something to hold the snake's mouth open while you're taking the swabs. This can be a pencil, a small syringe, so in this case here I'm showing a one mil syringe, or if you have access to it, some proper snake mouth gags. Uh, a large paper clip would also be suitable. You're going to need some examination gloves. These can be just purchased from your local supermarket. You're going to need a sharp pair of scissors. These are a pair of surgical scissors. They don't have to be those. They can be just normal household scissors. You're going to need a Ziploc bag. And you're also going to need a self-adhesive label to be able to label the specimen container with your name and the snake's name. All right, so now we're going to just demonstrate how to take the mouth and cloacal swabs. So our demonstration snake, this is Selma. This is our coastal carpet python. And First thing to make sure is you have all the equipment ready and good to go. So we're going to use our mouth gag to hold our mouth open. And we're going to use our sterile swab. Now in larger snakes, ideally what you try and do is take the sample down inside her windpipe and then the rest of her mouth. Uh, she's not big enough to put that down there, but we're going to swab around the actual windpipe or what's called the glottis and get some good samples from there. And then we're going to rub the actual swab along her lip and the mouth. Now, it's best to go from her nose towards the back of her because that means your swab won't catch in the teeth. And so as we rub down the sides, rubbing between the mouth and the teeth, pretty much all over the roof of her mouth. It's probably not that comfortable for them, probably feels a bit strange. And also down on the bottom, but go from the front of the face to the back and that'll avoid it getting caught in the teeth. The teeth point backwards, so if you try and pull it forward, you'll get that caught on the teeth. So we pre-moistened this swab first by placing it into the, some saline, and then we're taking our samples there. So now we'll show you how to take a cloacal sample. So now we're going to take the cloacal swab. So we're using the same swab that we used in her mouth. You do the mouth first and then you go to the back end here, not the other way around. And it's pretty simple. We just lift up that cloacal scale and gently push the swab up the cloaca. It only needs to go in sort of probably one to three centimetres in a snake of this size. And just roll that around inside there so you're taking a sample inside the cloaca and up the colon. 
and then you can remove that. And that's pretty simply how you take the samples. So we've got our mouth and cloacal swap and what I've done is put two to five mils of saline into our sterile container. We take our scissors and just gently cut the tip off. So that sits into the saline. Put our lid on, screw that on well. We label that with the snake's surname and its name. And then we put that inside our Ziploc bag and be sure to seal that bag tightly just in case there's any leakage from the container it will be contained within the Ziploc bag when you post it. The second type of sample that can be used are fresh tissue samples. These samples can be collected from a live snake by a surgical biopsy conducted by a veterinarian. Alternatively, samples can be collected at the time of a post-mortem on a dead snake. In order to submit these samples, you're going to require the following equipment. Obviously, you're going to need the tissue samples. You only need small samples. Pinhead size is more than adequate. And in order of preference, you should collect brain, kidney, lung, and liver. You're going to need about five mils of sterile saline. Once again, you're going to need a sterile container. You're going to need an adhesive, self-adhesive label to be able to label that container and a Ziploc bag to put that container in. To submit your fresh tissue samples, it's a simple process of putting your little tissue samples into your container, small amount of sterile saline in there, label it with your label with the snake's name and your surname, and place it into the Ziploc bag and seal that so that if there's any leakage from your container, it's contained within the bag. The third and final type of sample that can be tested are what are called histopathology slides. When samples of tissues are collected, they can be submitted to a pathology lab for histopathologic evaluation. The samples are prepared and various thin slices are fixed onto glass microscope slides. These are then stained with a variety of chemicals and the pathologist, with the aid of a microscope, is able to examine the tissue. These slides are able to be tested for the presence of sunshine virus and furlivirus. You're going to need the histopathology slides. These will need to have been prepared by the pathology lab. Your veterinarian will be able to assist you in this process. The lab needs to be informed that the slides will be prepared for PCR testing and they may be able to send them directly to the laboratory in Perth for testing. You're also going to need microscope slide holders. If you have the prepared slides, these need to be placed into these hard plastic cases to avoid them being damaged in the post. Ensure each slide is labelled with the snake's name and your surname. So once you have your samples ready, obviously we need to now submit them to the lab. In order to do that, you need to download the submission form and complete that. It's pretty self-explanatory. Top section is client details, so you need to put in your surname, first name, your address, your phone and your email. The second part of the form is the patient details, so we need the name of your snake or microchip number or some other way that you identify it, its approximate age, what species of snake it is, whether it's a male or female or whether you uh, don't know the sex. Importantly, if it's showing any signs of illness such as respiratory disease, neurological disease, if it's anorexic, weight loss, please detail those there in the form. The next part, the third section of the form is the testing details. Here you need to indicate what it is that you're actually submitting, whether it be mouth or cloacal swabs, fresh tissue or the pathology slide. You also need to tick here which test you'd like performed. You can either get sunshine virus done on its own, furlivirus done on its own, or you can have both of those tests done on the same sample. The fourth part of the form is your veterinarian's details. So remember, in order to submit these to the lab, you need to have that done by a veterinarian. You cannot just send them straight to the lab yourself. You need to put your veterinarian's details here, such as name, their practice, their address, their phone number, email address. They also need to sign it and date it. That's their acknowledgement that they have okayed for those tests to be done. Also a reminder that you need to pay your vet direct for the testing. The vet will then be billed by the laboratory and the results will be sent through to your vet and they are the ones that you need to discuss the results with. Please do not contact the laboratory directly. 
The final section here is the authorisation. This is where you need to sign and date the form. This is your authorisation to request the testing to be done. There's an address here where you need to submit the samples to and as mentioned please enclose a copy of your receipt from your submitting veterinarian as verification of payment. If you don't pay for it the test won't be done. Uh, those results will be forwarded to your veterinarian when they're available. Once you've collected your samples and completed the submission form, the samples can be sent for testing. Samples should be sent early in the week, such as a Monday or a Tuesday, to avoid the possibility of the samples being delayed in the postal system over the weekend. The samples should be sent Platinum Express Post to the address that's on the submission form. If you're sending fresh tissue samples, a small ice brick should be included in the package. This is particularly important if the samples are being sent during the hot periods of the year. Results are normally available two to four weeks after they arrive at the lab. These results will be sent to veterinarian. A written report detailing the results will be provided to them. You should contact them to obtain a copy of this report and discuss the results with them. Please do not contact the laboratory directly.